What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Steph, back with another reaction. It's New Year's Eve 2018. Turn up what it is. This time, I have four true New Year's Eve horror stories that will creep you out. And it is uploaded by Mortis Media. I've never reacted to anything from him. So this will be my first reaction to any of his content. If I like what I hear, I'll definitely react to more of his content. Y'all already know how I am when it comes to new content creators that I come across. Down in the description will be a link to Mortis Media's channel, along with a link to this original video. Without further ado, let's get into it. Mortis Media. Uploaded December 31st, 2016. So exactly two years today. Hey guys, before the video begins, please don't forget to rate and comment on the video, as it really helps me and the channel out. But more importantly, from next video onwards, your suggestions will determine the next video. I'm going to create a wheel that will spin with all your suggestions in the comment to see which video will come out next. So feel free to start commenting away. Thanks guys, you really are awesome. I'll give you a bit of information about me before I go into the story. I was living in New Zealand as a 23 year old and my birthday is on New Year's Day. Hey. We have a festival on the south side of North Island where you camp and get drunk and whatnot whilst listening to music. And it lasts up to seven days. Damn. So, this was New Year's Eve. People had been up for days. I'd woken up early and had decided to have a shower before everyone else woke up and used up all the hot water. I took all of my belongings I needed and walked to the first toilet. These ones were up some stairs in a portable building. There was section for boys and girls. I'm a girl, by the way. As I walked up the stairs, I heard someone call out to me. I looked round and saw a guy walking towards me. I stopped because I thought he probably wanted to ask me a question about the camping grounds or something. So he came up to me and said, Hey, I'm Jesse. What's your name? And proceeded to hold his hand out and shake my hand. I was like, oh, hey, and shook his hand back. I thought this was weird, as I was part way up the stairs, and when I went to pull my hand back, he held onto it and said, can I get your number? What? I ripped my hand out and gave him a look that said, yeah, right, mate, and laughed. He looked offended, and so I said, Dude, it's 6am, and you've introduced yourself to me whilst I'm on my way to the toilet. I'm not going to give you my number. He shrugged and went on his way. Or so I thought. When I'd finished in the toilet, I came out to the door and briefly looked up where I noticed him crouching behind a tree. What? He didn't see me, so I kept it that way to scope out what he was doing. As I was walking to the shower... Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed him run from behind the tree to behind a building that they used to sell food that was closer to me. I was shitting my pants at this point, <laughs> and the stairs to the shower were behind the building I was in. So I walked that way, and instead of going up the stairs to enter the shower, I ran and hid. That's when I saw him run round the building and up to the stairs. I bolted. I was so angry and scared at this point. I kept running until I found some poor hungover young boy that was spewing out his guts. He might have to catch these hands. And I told him what happened and asked him if he could just stand with me for a bit. Give him them hands. Not that it would have been much help if the guy came looking for me. Hell no. Nah. But the company was nice and slightly reassuring. After I'd calmed down a bit and decided to look for security as I didn't want anyone else going through it, I thanked the boy for his company and found one of the on-duty security officers. As we searched the campgrounds, there was a hilly part that was blocked by one section from the other. We walked over it and found two boys. They were picking up anything they could throw at tents. And lo and behold, he was one of them. Of course. I notified the security officer that it was him and he noped out of there. I later heard that he got kicked out the festival. So potential rapist, let's not meet again. <laughs> potential rapist? 
Last year, around 2 a.m. on New Year's Day, he would have to catch the hand. I heard a loud noise. It sounded like someone drove to the end of my street and hit the dumpster. The sound was loud, metallic, and almost hollow. I went outside to investigate since my car is parked along the street, and I wanted to make sure that it did not get hit. Right. I get outside and it's dead quiet, except for a female making a noise. I live in an apartment building right next to the interstate, and on the other side of that is a hospital with a huge parking lot. Right. I heard the female and figure kids were outside screwing around in the parking lot. But as I listened closer, I noticed the female was crying and saying things like, oh my God, over and over. I went inside and bundled up, since it was about 20 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Damn. Then I walked a short distance up a hill to the fence line to the interstate. It was really dark, but I could see the shape of an overturned vehicle in the road and a silhouette of another car on the shoulder. Traffic was very, very light. Right then, a police cruiser pulled up and slowly shone its lights at a mass in the road. It flipped its emergency lights on and turned the car so that it would be facing oncoming traffic and was about to put down flares. I went back inside to grab some better gloves and when I came out there were several emergency vehicles that were setting up floodlights. The mass on the road was a body. Luckily, I didn't see the details. By the time there was enough light, the body was covered. I never saw the female. Later, I realized that two guys in a BMW were driving way too fast along the road and tried to pass the female driver. They lost control and flipped the car. They were both ejected from the vehicle. One ended up in a ditch and the other in the middle of the highway. The guy in the ditch lived and apparently the female driver stopped and tried to help. And that is who I heard. They deserve that shit. Fuck them. I attended what was expected to be a super fun party. Being stupid. Commemorating the end of 2015 at a close friend's home. I expected to be awake till dawn. So I made sure to eat a big dinner and arrived late to the party around 11pm with two of my best friends. We're a pretty tight-knit social group. And despite the party being a combination house show with several bands playing, I virtually knew all of the 60 people or so who were already there when I arrived. Among friends and acquaintances, everyone was celebrating, drinking and just having a great time. I had planned to meet up with some other friends around 2am when they would be finished bartendering a public event. So I was drinking socially but in moderation. I'm no stranger to the source and have a healthy tolerance. By midnight, the party had grown to at least a hundred people. And by the time there were people drifting in from neighboring parties and the surrounding university area. I opened my third beer at 1 a.m. and continued taking pictures, snaps and messaging other friends who were not there. Mm -hmm. Around 1.30, I started to feel really drunk. I bet. And thinking that perhaps I was just overwhelmed by the constant activity around me. As I hadn't really drunk all that much yet. I stepped into the most empty part of the living room for a breather. And messaged my friend. I sent her a message inviting her to the party as we planned on meeting up. As I finished my message, I felt someone come up behind me. He pressed his body against mine and he grabbed my hip. As I straightened up, I could feel him bending down slightly to whisper in my ear. But it wasn't a whisper. He clearly said to me, In a few minutes, you aren't going to remember anything. And then I'm going to rape the shit out of you. What? Wait, what? I froze. It hit me. I wasn't feeling really drunk. Oh, no. The confusion that I had attributed to the social anxiety of the large crowd, 
I was experiencing because I had been drugged. I knew I only had moments to prevent the inevitable. Yeah. I ran from him, best I could, and did not turn around. I retrieved my purse and jacket and started calling the two people that I was meant to meet up with at 2am. I was so out of it. I was having a hard time communicating what was happening. I started crying, moving through the house, trying to find someone I could explain it to. But I was too disoriented. But thankfully, my first friend was able to leave bartending early and came to pick me up. He called me as soon as I ran outside. The creepy guy literally chased me and was right on my tail. He said the creepy guy was trying to wave him down, shouting to my friend that he was my friend and he was going to take me home. Nah. I was told by my friend that I just kept yelling, drive, drive from the back seat. Fuck that. He took me home where we met up with friend number two who was bartendering at the event. And at 2.30, I lost consciousness completely. Damn. And remained unconscious for five and a half hours. Damn! They were shaking me, trying to get some kind of reaction. Jesus but nothing. Christ. I didn't respond in any way. They sat up with me throughout the night to try and make sure I was okay. And at around 7 a.m., I somehow managed to get up and climb out of bed. At 9 a.m., I woke up with a start and had no idea where I was, but was so relieved to discover... I was safely at home. I was high for a total of 20 hours and did not feel normal again for several days. I don't think I'll ever wow. know who drugged me and only have a very vague description to work from. Be careful with your drinks. He slipped you that good shit. It was New Year's Eve and I was home alone. I left a full pack of cigarettes on my coffee table. I remember throwing them down and staring at the pack a while thinking, wow. it's New Year's Eve. Today is my last day. I'm still tripping over the last year, story. I'm gonna quit. And this is my last pack. Sure. An hour later, I went to grab a cigarette and the pack was gone. I had a very pronounced <laughs> thought in my head go. You shouldn't be smoking anyway. Excuse me. Okay. So I figured it was possible that I moved them absentmindedly, or that my kitty may have had some fun playing with it. I looked everywhere, and I had no luck. Annoyed, I went to my secret stash, as I always keep some extra cigarettes in my drawer. I had a few puffs and decided to save the rest for later. I came back inside and put the cigarettes and lighter right underneath my coffee table. I went to do some dishes and came back to grab another cigarette to have one more smoke. The lighter was there, but the box of cigarettes was not. I was the only one in that room, and I can guarantee that my cat was not in there the whole time. I was not drunk, and I was not on drugs. I looked everywhere, and I found absolutely no trace of either boxes. I found it really creepy. But oh well, I needed to quit anyway. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. Have a safe New Year's Eve everyone. All comments and ratings would be very much appreciated. Especially to determine which video we'll make next. So get your voice heard and comment down below. You can also follow me on my various social medias in the description. But for now, guys, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one. I'm still trying to get over the fact of the bullshit that occurred in that third story. So he slipped some type of drug into your drink, and you start feeling weird. And then he comes over a little while later and says... In a little while, you're going to pass out, and I'm going to rape the shit out of you. Who says that? Really? Come on, bro. You know what? Stories like those get me because it's like, I feel like if you rape a child or rape a woman, automatic death sentence. I don't care what the situation is.
this could be your ex-girlfriend or ex-wife. Y'all dated or y'all were married for like 10, 15, 20 years or however long. And she divorces you and or cheats on you. And you want to get back at her and you rape her? Man, I don't have tolerance for rapists, child molesters, predators, even though that's kind of all this in the same group. They're all disgusting. It's lewd. It's just, I don't know, man. It's, it, it bothers me. Honestly, rape and child molestation should be an immediate death sentence. If not immediate death sentence, immediate 25 to life. I will be honest, though. At least he told you what his intentions were. And at least he admitted that he's the one who spiked your drink with whatever. That's that good shit. Because you stay coherent for a nice little minute and then you passed out and you was out for five and a half hours. For five to five and a half hours? Damn. I can almost guarantee that's not his first rodeo, spiking a woman's drink like that. Like I said, don't got time for it. I want to know why he put so much emphasis on the shit. He didn't say, I'm going to rape the shit out of you. I'm going to rape the shit out of you. Really? We're still out here raping women? Dude, bruh, come on, man. There are females out here who will throw that little pussy and throw that little throat away for a little bit of nothing. They may be difficult to find at times, but they're out here. But instead, you want to take it from someone who doesn't want to give it to you. And it sounds like she really didn't even know you, bruh. Come on, man. There's always females around here who will give it away for free. I will take a bitch to McDonald's and get her two double cheeseburgers, a large fry, and a large drink. All of that in and of itself will cost about five, six, maybe seven dollars at the most, depending on what McDonald's you go to, because a lot of them have different prices, even though it's all the same fucking food. I ain't gotta rape no woman. Never would, never will, never have, never would fathom, never would want to, when there's ones out here who will throw away for a little bit of nothing. Dudes like him are fucking pathetic and deserve everything they get. You deserve to get your cheeks clapped in jail. Honestly. Cause you know I hear up there in jail, booty, getting some booty, is more important than drinking water. It's more important than eating food. <laughs> Shout out to the Boondocks and Fleece Johnson, the Booty Warrior. If y'all got that reference, you're awesome. Everybody in this video could have caught the hands if I was in that situation. Everybody. Everybody could have caught the hands. From the first story all the way to the last story. Every situation. The person who was fucking with y'all or trying to come after y'all, they could have caught the hands. But that is it for this video, y'all. If you like my reaction, like the video, comment on the video, and share the video. And if you really liked it, subscribe to the channel and tap that bell icon so you will be notified every time I drop new content, which I do on a weekly basis. That is all I got for y'all this time around. Enjoy your New Year's Eve, and your boy Steph is out.